Greg wrote on October 18, 1978, and he put cycling goals. And it says, number one, 79, win junior world championships, road race. Number two, 1980, win Olympic road race. Number three, by age 22, win world championships, road race. Number four, age 25, win Tour de France. It wasn't made up as just a dream, because I had made that up, those lists after I went to Europe for two months. I was just as good as anybody. So I didn't think, why wouldn't I dream for this? Why wouldn't I shoot for that? You know, why would I limit myself to thinking that I'm somehow inferior? So when you were just a kid, what's the inspiration that got you cycling to lead you into becoming? I saw the mountains. Yes. Behind. The fact that you get into something you never discovered and the beauty of riding up a hill outside riding the bike itself got me hooked. training ground that Greg Lamont used to train on. So we got some recommendations and we're riding on some roads that he recommended. We're gonna ride with him tomorrow and last night in the hotel we were going over all the stories that we all knew of Greg Lamont, the race stories, there's dramatics, you know, injury stories off the bike and then comes back and wins a tour and then, you know, he was the man. Just coming up this grade on and on and on. That last little bit when it got yeah, steep again, that's why, that's why I thought about them training here. Feet and then it went up to 7,000 feet and you're like, oh, 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 yeah. 16 years old? Yeah. Yeah, growing up. Sorry, this is your backyard. The Mavic ceramic. Box old section. Old school. Yeah. That is awesome. That's the real thing right there. We're going to ride with Greg Lamont this morning, so we're starting from his father's house. There's a couple cool bikes back here, so that was one of the things that we're talking about for the last couple nights was, you know, what bike is he going to ride? That's always been one of the cool things about Lamont is all the bikes that have come through that, that he's been involved with. It's always been a part of the association with Greg LeMond. What are we getting ready to do here, Benjamin? I have no clue, but look around, take a look. What's that? Mountains, trees, blue sky. I've got a yellow jersey to wear right here, man. We're gonna follow that wheel. <laughs> where I grew up cycling in 1976. And this would be a typical ride that we do probably on the weekends. I think it's some of the most spectacular uh, bike riding in the country. Kind of got the, the European pitches that you have to go to Europe for. So you don't even have to go, just come to California, come to Nevada.
I keep hanging back, trying to hear them more and more. It's really cool hearing all these stories. For people to be able to hold on to them so vividly, it's pretty cool. We're just kicking back and listening and getting an education in cool. what better place to go to school. brought a lot of these traditions and and this sport to the U.S. riders. Cycling was so foreign, and cycling at that time, you might like from the British point of view, it was chariots of fire. The thought of my age group getting into cycling, it was no ambition to go to the tour. It wasn't an ambition to do anything. It was just, and it, it was like, it's a tool that gives you pleasure. And that's why cycling still grabs people. And, it's such a good feeling, and it's it's dynamic, it's social, it's it's a magical sport. You know, try to explain what it's like to be able to race in the tour on closed roads in the peloton with the people. It's it's uh, it's good. It was fun.